Okay, um, this is uh, something that the Lord, this, uh, an event that occurred on 10 19 20. And I'm going to start recording these because they're becoming so profound and there's, they're coming fast and furious these days. Um, God is really opening up my, my um, insight, my discernment, my understanding, my revelation, knowledge. It's, it's pretty incredible. So anyway, um, this day, October 19th, I was listening to a Catherine Kuhlman teaching, one I actually hadn't heard. And it was the Holy Spirit. She was discussing the Holy Spirit, her favorite subject. So much she said minister to me, but this one thing stood out as I heard Yah tell me to write it down. <laughs> write it down. She was talking about fellowship with the Holy Spirit, how she craves the Holy Spirit, desiring to spend intimate time with him for fellowship and counsel. It was like, wow, <laughs> that's so me. Then all of a sudden, I just saw myself crying out for fellowship and, and counsel, wise counsel. All the time, I'm crying out to, to Abba, I need wise counsel. I need fellowship. You know, I'm so alone. I'm so, you know, I need to help talk this out, confused. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm constantly saying that. I'm so lonely. I feel so lost and alone. And then all of a sudden I realized I'm being led into a consecrated life, I think, which she says is a lonely life because she herself led a consecrated life. That the fellowship that I crave does not come from human fellowship. Instead, Yah is showing me I am to be in that constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. This revelation became so powerful to me. It just, it just leaped on, off the recording at me. Yah wants my total focus to be Him at this point and His Holy Spirit. Not man. Like Israel, totally dependent on him. You know, the land of Israel is totally dependent on God for water, rain. So I'm just, that's the way God wants you, totally dependent. That's a walk by faith where you have no idea where you're going, what you're doing. You're just going by faith that God is leading you where you're supposed to go. I have zero understanding of any of this. I'm being conformed to him daily. Dying to myself. And believe me, this is not an easy process. But it's a must. I totally get it. It's a must. If you want to serve Yah with his power and his authority. Example, last night I was watching a video of Trump in Newport Beach. He went there for a fundraiser. And the thousands of patriots lining the streets to greet him. It was a beautiful thing to see. The love, the support for this president is incredible. Myself included. I cry as I pray over him all the time. It's like there's a certain spiritual connection that I've had with him since 2015 when the Lord first laid him on my heart. But I digress. As I watched, I began to sob. Not tearing up, not crying, sobbing. And I thought, what am I sobbing for? I was remembering me as I used to be so involved. I was looking at those people and remembering me. That was me. I would have probably, under normal circumstances, been the organizer of such an event. That's who I was. And the operative word was was, which is why I was sobbing. As I sat there watching and questioning, I hear the Holy Spirit say to me, you're dying to yourself. This is letting go of once, what once was and will no longer be. 
Behold, he says, I'm doing a new thing. I'm beginning to see, to realize, as I was working on the rapture teaching, I keep working with the same scriptures over and over and over. And they're all, all showing God's heart over and over in various ways, but his heart. And during this time with him where I have been isolated and my fellowship and my counsel comes from the Holy Spirit, I have learned my Abba's heart. I feel my Abba's heart. I know my Abba's heart. Which is why he gave me those scriptures over and over and over again. And this morning I realized I'm not only being consecrated, I'm being shown God's heart over and over and over. To the point I'm to show God's heart to others. Look at all my writings and my teachings. There is an understanding without knowing why of the supernatural nature of everything. With the wilderness generation, Yah has shown me himself through my wilderness journey. His heart. So while I have zero understanding of any of this, I know that my fellowship and my wise counsel comes from the Holy Spirit, Abba himself, divinely channeled through me for the rest of you. And if I were to back up and take this to a place where um, Catherine Kuhlman, again, Catherine Kuhlman, <laughs> so it said so many powerful things, and I'm trying to get to it here quickly. I'm going to just go through this, because she was talking about a man called um, Hudson Taylor, and we were listening, and she was telling what she learned through him of the simplicity of serving God. This is what I'm learning. The simplicity of serving him and hearing him. And this is what Hudson Taylor, these are a couple quotes from Hudson Taylor. And you'll see why I'm putting them in here with this, because to me, this all ties together. When God wants to do his great works, he trains somebody to be quiet enough and little enough. Then he uses that person. I can relate to this since I've been in this wilderness. That's the quiet it's been me and him, period, in this wilderness. And I've had to stand quiet before him to learn, to hear him. And I'm definitely little. I've been brought down to zero. He has humbled me and taken me to the garden on several occasions. Another quote, it does not matter how great the pressure is on your life, on you. What really matters is where the pressure lies, whether it comes between you and God or whether it presses you nearer to his heart. Okay. Another one, provision has already been given by God. It's a gift from him. Remember that provision has already been given by God, a gift from him. For all of his kids to have literally an unbroken fellowship with him and an unbroken victory in him, a victorious life. But the reason so many don't have this gift, this manifest gift, where they're in a constant fellowship, an unbroken fellowship with Abba himself, and they live a victorious life. This is what she said, what Hudson Taylor said, or I mean Catherine said. 
The gift in large measure is unaccepted. Think of that. We don't accept the gift of an unbroken fellowship with God and a victorious life. Why? Because of its terms. This was so powerful to me because I've surrendered and I'm in the process of dying to self. I've accepted its terms, but this is why people do not live a victorious life. Its terms require a surrender, which the average believer slash Christian is unwilling to make. They're unwilling to yield to the will of God. They're unwilling to become a servant rather than the leader. Okay, another one from Catherine. The things you have to pay most for are usually the things that are most valuable. But Yeshua's gift is free to us. Think of that. We value the things we pay a lot of money for. But when a gift from Yeshua himself comes to us free, we don't value it. Why? Because we didn't pay a price for it. Which is what dying to yourself is all about. You're going to pay a price. Picking up your cup, picking up your cross, drinking your cup. There's, your, there's where you pay the price. Just like Yeshua did. You don't come to God unless there's a price paid. And this is another quote from Hudson Taylor. God is not looking for men of great faith. He's looking for common men to trust his great faithfulness. And this one from Catherine. No one, no minister, no teacher, no nothing can give more to someone than what his, he's experienced himself. This is why God it has us experience things so we can in turn relate to others and help them in their time of need. So he walks us through a time of trial and testing, and then in turn we pay it forward and help somebody else. Okay? God isn't looking for people of great faith, but for individuals ready to follow him. Just follow him, doing his will, his way. Here's another one. God uses men who are weak and feeble enough to lean on him. Not the haughty and the arrogant and the proud. He wants the humble. Another one from Hudson Taylor. I have found that there are three stages in every great work of God. First, oh my God, it's impossible. And then it's difficult. And then it's done. That's kind of cute to me. This was another one. All our difficulties are only platforms for the manifestation of his grace, his power, and his love. So he walks us through all this for his power, for his love, for his glory, to show us. And this is another one. Do not have your concert first and tune your instrument afterwards. Begin your day with God. This one I particularly liked. I used to ask God to help me. Then I asked if I might help him. And then I ended up by asking him to do his work through me. And you know what? He does just that. I'm like a scribe to him. He gives me stuff and I just write it down. That's why he's always telling me to write it down. So those were some interesting things. And then here are some more from, from Catherine, which I picked these up that just blessed my socks off. So I just wanted I just want to do this. So there was a question, what does it take for a person to be able to walk in that kind of power? And it's two things. The kind of power Catherine Kuhlman um, exuded during her time in ministry. 
It takes two things, consecration unto, uh, unto God, and I'm telling you, that is a yielded person. And then it takes concentration because you have to concentrate on what, the, what Yah is telling you, okay? Your life, your personal commitment to Yeshua, your personal relationship with Yeshua in the Holy Spirit, does put you at a level of consciousness where you know faith becomes knowledge. I call them knowings, not understanding what really is happening and why I know. She was saying this, and I. this is me. I mean, this is like me talking, but it, it was her. This makes it clear. I know because God is consecrating me to him and my faith turns into knowledge. This is why I have these knowings. She's she so cleared it up for me. Faith becomes knowledge. And since I'm operating on Abba's faith, I'm getting Abba's knowledge. Knowings. <laughs> now I know why I have these knowings. But you have to stay in the will of God to be to get here. Her quote, never get out of the will of God. And she says people envy and admire and em- and want to emulate her. You know, oh, let's get up and you know, let everybody be healed. But all they see is the glory. They don't see the sacrifice. What it took to get there. The dying to self. They don't understand the story. They just see the glory. And no one knows the great price that will be paid for this power and this authority of God that I'm trying to die myself to so I can attain that kind of power and authority. And I'm desperately trying to persevere and overcome and, and succeed for my, for my Abba. No one knows the great price that will be paid. It will cost you everything, she said, your very life. Well, I'm here to attest to that. Do you know and understand the price, she said? What it will cost you. It will cost you your very life. And it did cost her her very life. So let these words sustain you in the very darkest moments of your journey. So at those moments, you can embrace your soul with the words of a woman of God. To serve God in power and authority, it will cost you your very life. It will cost you everything. Never get out of the will of God. Amen. I just wanted to share all that with you because it was the most powerful little walk through scripture. And there's so much more. There is so much more. And I will share some more. But right now for this one, um, let me just add this one more. She talks about faith where she says we all desire faith, but it's not something we of ourselves can grasp. (laughs) Faith is a gift from and of God. Or it's the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Whether it be a gift or fruit, it comes from God. So stop working at it. You can't get it. When will we put an end to our unscriptural mental and intellectual gyrations or our attempt to find a faith we do not possess. And we never will, unless it comes from God. We can't manufacture the faith. Any faith I have is not of myself. It's from God, not by my works. His gift, because I yielded. We just talked about that gift. Because of myself, I can do nothing. So you get that great faith because you yield. And then you get his faith. (laughs) We're capable of belief. 
We are absolutely incapable of the Bible faith that it takes to get to this power. Belief is not faith. Belief is an intellectual exercise. Even the devil believes. Think of that. Only when you believe to the point of action and do something about it, when you take the action to that faith, it becomes something. Belief alone is cold and intellectual. It's a mental, not a spiritual exercise. Such belief does not save you. Faith is a living thing. Belief and faith are not one and the same thing. Do you need all the faith in the world? No, you only need the grain of a mustard seed of Yah's faith. He imparts it to us, to a yielded vessel. Truly seek him with all your heart. He will impart his faith to you. The power of God can be manifested in your life until men and angels will wonder because you'll have so much power. But when the battle is over and the victory is won, don't look back and say, look what I've done through God. But rather kneel at the foot of Yeshua and say, isn't it wonderfully awesome that his grace, grace, his faith, and his power should be manifest in me and through me. Oh, praise God. The Holy Spirit takes a yielded vessel. And when we've yielded to him, then he works through and with that vessel. That we've yielded. All he asks, all he wants is our yieldedness. <laughs> That's a word. He wants our bodies. He wants our lives as the vessel through which he works, through which he can do his work. He needs us to help him do his work. That's why we need to be a yielded vessel so he can work through us. And manifest his power and his authority and his glory. And when it's all over, when people have been healed, when people have come to know and receive Yeshua as Lord, all through what he has done, and faith has been restored through his wonderful gift, on the banks of, in the banks of life, the Holy Spirit then gives us the credit for what he did through us. Ponder that. And that goes in your bank in heaven where you build up your rewards. When I remember all I have to do is supply the willingness. All I have to do is give myself to him. All I have to do is give him body, soul, and spirit. For it's not my talent. I have none. I have nothing. I know. No talent. But I also know that if I give my body as a living sacrifice, the little I have, I surrender to him. It isn't much. So little. But I give it to you willingly, Abba. I yield to you. That moment that I give, that I yield, the mighty power of the Holy Spirit fills this vessel with himself, the greatest power on earth. <laughs> and he works through the lips of the clay, us, me. And he works through the mind. He'll take that mind and body and he will work through that body as it's yielded, as, as, as a yielded body. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, he says. It is the one that does it, the will. Bodies are healed, souls are restored, lives are saved, miracles take place. 
Then one day his promise, he promises to give us the reward for what he did through us. (laughs) Ponder that. Faith, I have none of my own. No power to manufacture faith. Faith is a gift of God and a gift from God. It's a a gift he gives to you freely, willingly, if you'll but yield. Fear God so much you have no fear of man. Have such a reverence, awe of God, you care not what man thinks, only what God thinks. And never get out of the will of God. And remember, yield. All he wants is your yieldedness. And then you'll get such great faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.